shall we start? And um, you just introduce the, um, the outline of the workshop, which is the next slide. Okay. So, yeah, you've heard uh, Diana uh, talk about the Learning Center just now. And my name is Tim Neumann. I am uh, head of the Learning Technologies Unit at UCL Institute of Education, which is a busy job in this current atmosphere, as you can imagine, because we need to coordinate the UCL IOE response to COVID-19. And what we are planning for this workshop is to um, show you just short video clips that introduce the background of the learning designer, but also some of the uh, more detailed functionality. And then I am going to take you through uh, an example of uh, how to construct and edit a learning design and then what analysis tools you're getting. Uh, Diana will then uh, talk about contrasting face-to-face -face and online versions. So um, how can we represent different modes of teaching in the learning center? And what can we actually learn from that? And then I will um, show what we can do with the designs once we have designed them, taking them out of the learning center and actually implement them in the classroom or in virtual learning environment or however else we are going to interact with our learners. And uh, Diana will then wrap it up and we have plenty of time for questions and answers in between. So if there's anything, please use the text chat. I shall keep an eye on that, if I can see that. Um, and yeah, feel free to intervene at any point. May, may I say something? As I'm going to home among all the uh, rooms, I'm going to make Diana the host of this session instead of me, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Emmanuel. Um, so, Tim, can, uh, I, you, can you stop sharing and... Yeah, you can just... Um, I am, no, you are still sharing, oh, so I can't. Sorry, uh, you, you can just share yourself and that overrides mine. Um, okay. mm, You're the host. Yes, yeah. it, it allows me to do that. Yes, yeah. I can just override you. Fine, okay. So, um, this is, um, uh, we weren't sure if people will have looked at the, um, uh, the videos beforehand. Are you seeing something on the screen which says conversational framework? Yes. Good. Okay. So, um, we thought we'd just show some uh, brief clips from the three videos that we put up, which introduce different aspects of the learning design tool. So this first bit is, is talking through the six learning types, which is the underlying pedagogy on which the whole thing is based. It comes from the conversational framework, which I wrote about in a book back in the 90s and then um, a revision in, um, the, in 2002. And then in Teaching as a Design Science, which is in, was in 2012. So it's been a, a, a kind of um, building framework for how we think about the pedagogy of learning design. So this is the intro. The conversational framework is intended to help teachers think about teaching and learning from the student's point of view. Basically, it's a distillation of the main educational literature on the key findings and principles about learning. This is the full framework. It's complex, but it has to be. The process of teaching and learning is a highly complex activity, and this diagram is about as simple as it could possibly be. So that's showing the different kinds of interaction between um, the, for the learner in the middle, between concepts and practice. That's what we're trying to get students to do, develop their concepts and practice and combine the two. And then there are different interactions with the teacher on the one hand and with their peers on the other. We're now going to um, whiz through to the final part where it's just kind of summarizing what this is all about. I've got the right bit here. Together, all six types of learning activity cover most of what you're ever likely to ask of students, and together they cover the whole conversational framework. So to summarize, the best possible learning experience comes from using all those types of interaction, 
a rich mix of learning activities is likely to be the most effective. Okay, so the, the rich mix comes from that um, uh, diagram there, which is, is showing, shush, um, which is showing learning through acquisition, which is where the teacher is explaining concepts, learning through inquiry, which is a student asking of the teacher or asking of books in the library, um, investigating for themselves. So that's different from learning through inquiry. Then learning through practicing, you're, the teacher sets up a learning environment and the learner, it sets a goal for the learner who does something, sees what happens, has another go and so on. And in the process sometimes has to think about the concepts in order to um, act successfully on that learning environment, whether that's a lab practice or it's analyzing poetry or whatever the subject matter. Then there's learning through discussion where you're challenging your peers or discussing with peers um, trying to uh, debate, challenge each other, ask and answer questions, that sort of learning process. Learning through collaboration is, includes discussion, includes practice, but they're also collaborating together to share their practice and try and achieve a common outcome. And finally, learning through production is when they have to um, describe what they've learned and deliver that to the teacher. Okay, and then the next um, video is looking at how you build up a learning design. So we'll just take you through a bit of um, showing how that works. One learners. So I've put in some context at the beginning, including a title, topic, description, aims and outcomes, how many learners involved. I can link the learning outcomes to Bloom's taxonomy of learning domains. I can specify the length of learning time I'm designing for and the tool will automatically calculate how much time I've used as I continue with my design. This helps me check that I'm not planning too much or too little for my learners. I'm going to make sure I click save regularly all the way through. So the next thing to do is to start building the detail. So I click this button which will add what we call a TLA or a set of teaching and learning activities. Well, I need to give my TLA a name and I'm going to highlight that this will involve individual activities completed online. And I need to decide what kind of learning experiences the student should have. I can choose from six learning types, read, watch, listen, collaborate, discuss, investigate, practice or produce. In this case, I'm going to choose Read, Watch, Listen because I want them to watch the video about World Book Day. So I need to decide how long this might take. I'll say maybe five minutes and how many learners it's going to involve. Well, they're all going to do it individually, so I'll put one there. And I need to decide whether or not the teacher needs to be present. This is useful for helping me design my blend of online and face-to-face -face activities. In this case, the teacher doesn't need to be there while they're watching, so I'm going to click to say no, the teacher is not present. And then I'm going to give a description about the activity and attach a resource, a link to the video on YouTube. I click on the plus sign to add the URL. Now I need to add another learning type because I want the learners to do some research themselves. So this time I'm going to choose investigate. I'm going to add some instructions and link to the sites I want them to look at, as well as a handy resource, Harvard Generator, for helping with the referencing as they take notes. Okay, so that gives you a rough idea of how the, um, the, uh, your lesson design builds up. And then the final video, um, we're looking here at, suppose you want to adapt what someone else has done. The whole point of this process is, um, as several other um, learning design tools emphasize, is that we should be able to share our designs. We should be able to learn from each other. So that the, the, the learning design environment then becomes, it's a little like um, a scientific journal. It should become something like the teaching equivalent of the way in which scientific knowledge progresses. If we can take someone else's idea, understand it, transform it, experiment with it, and then publish it back to the rest of the community, then we're beginning to be a, a genuine knowledge building community about what we're all trying to do here. 
So this, this final bit is, is about finding and adapting an existing learning design. When I log into the learning designer, I have two choices. I can look at the browser screen or the designer screen. I'm going to explore the browser screen. The browser screen shows me a directory of all of the designs that have been created by users of the learning designer so far. I'm going to look in the category grouped by user. Here I can see the designs created by different users. So for instance, if I click on Brigitte, I can see that she's created a design called running a virtual class. That's something I'm interested in. So I'm going to take a look at her design. Now I think I can use this design myself. I think I can adapt it to a slightly different purpose. And so what I'm going to do is turn editing on. What that does is it creates a copy of the original design for me. But the first thing I need to do is change that name because I don't want it to be called copy of running a virtual class. I think I'm going to call it teaching with wikis and blogs. And I'm going to use Brigitte's central idea but adapt it to my own purposes. So while she says in her first TLA that she wants the students to find out about web conferencing tools, I'm going to suggest they find out about wikis and blog tools. And then I can go on and adapt the original design to my own needs. I can change the learning types, I can change the times, and all the changes that I make are going to be reflected in the pie chart. So again, that gives you a rough idea of how you can edit. You can edit your own materials, of course, but you can, you can build on what someone else has previously done. And as you're going, it's dynamically updating the pie chart, which is showing you that overall learning experience that which the student is getting of a, quite a variety. You can see which, which learning types there's not very much of, and you might want to put a bit more in. There are no rules about what the pie chart should look like. It's simply showing you what you're creating from the student's point of view. So you can judge whether for your students at this stage of the course, that's appropriate or not. So that gives you a rough idea of the overview. Um, if we now go back to the uh, uh, organization of the session, um, I hope you've got enough sense, even if you didn't see the, um, uh, the materials beforehand, of what kind of thing the learning designer tool does. So you may have some questions, comments already. So please, as, uh, as Tim suggested, um, use the chat or um, I think we've got hands up on this haven't we so you could put hands up as well ah yes if you go to the participant list then there's an option to put hands up yes um, I've got myself in the wrong place here <laughs> So I want to go next. <laughs> well, could you moderate the, the chat, Tim, while I'm finding my way back? Absolutely. Uh, the, the chat is currently empty. So at, at this point, we probably don't have any questions. Um, but uh, again, if there are any comments or questions, then uh, please raise them, raise your hand, uh, or type something into the text chat. Um, the next step would, oh, oh yeah sorry yeah i'm a frat hi um can you combine these two uh, to the lms like the Moodle? we come to that in the final section um mm -hmm. if that's okay okay yeah. it's a, yeah. a very important issue yeah thank you yeah um to preclude yeah kind <laughs> of is the answer. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying. It's very difficult. Yeah. Mm. Um, sh shall we go to the live version then and uh, continue? Uh, yes. The mm -hmm. session there? yes. Okay. You can now share, Tim, because I stopped sharing the screen. Yeah. So you should see my screen and yes. let me try to go into full screen mode. I try to make this a little bit bigger. 
Okay, so this is the front screen once you're logged in and it doesn't look terribly exciting. Um, so the excitement comes only once you either go through the browser and look at other people's designs. And we have a list of curated designs by pedagogy, by topic, um, or we have other categories for specific purposes. So you can even browse by uh, education sector and um, we have some designs, for example, suitable for secondary and primary education, which is directly relevant to schools. What I'm going to show you now is how to edit the design. So I'm going to take one of my personal designs uh, and uh, this is a very reduced design, which is more of an abstract pattern. So this is uh, effectively a higher education context that is currently relevant. How do we convert, for example, three hour lectures into an online equivalent? So I'm going to take that because this is sort of generic. So as you can see on the topic, it says generic. And if you look at the instructions, they are not subject specific, they are very general. So this is an idea that this represents a certain pattern and you can then uh, fit this into your own subject by filling in uh, the contextual content information. I'm, I have just picked this design because there's not much to read, so you can quite easily get into that. Uh, so if we want to change things, uh, there is a very quick button to do so we can just create a duplicate of it. Whoops, and that shouldn't have happened. Um, well, the alternative is to turn editing on and go into edit mode. And then uh, when saving it, I can save a copy. So, and now it says here at the top, copy of online lecture. So let's call it the MyTel demo of the online lecture, just to uh, separate it out. Uh, and, and then we have um, yeah, the specified learning time that we want to design towards. And the fields below can't be filled in manually because that's what we are doing here in the bottom field. I have already pre-populated some of the learning outcomes according to Bloom's taxonomy. So uh, students should define concepts they are going to illustrate the relevant of concepts uh, and then they're also going to produce something. So when we want to translate a three hour face-to-face -face session into an equivalent online experience, we, for example, recommend uh, breaking up the lecture parts into um, video recordings. But we start by giving students uh, some homework to do, read an article and come up with one to three questions. That is an individual activity. So we have a group size of one um, and an overall duration of 30 minutes. Now, um, here is already an assumption. We are assuming that students take 30 minutes to uh, read through a text, but if it's a complicated text, then this might take much, much more time. So it might take students 45, time, uh, 45 minutes. And we can see that uh, the pie chart in, uh, changes immediately. And the designed learning time is now above what I wanted to do. So um, we have to find 15 minutes to cut elsewhere. Um, for example, uh, a big chunk of work is here, the discussion in the second part uh, which is a teacher-led um, discussion um, because the teacher button is clicked and you can see with all the other activities, uh, the teacher icon has an X next to it, which means that the teacher does not need to be present for this activity. You can give your students just the instructions and they can work by themselves as homework, as catch-up work, as group work, but they work by themselves without supervision. Here, I'm going to cut down the time with the lecturer to 45 minutes, which should bring my overall design learning time in line with uh, the overall planned time, which is great. So um, what, once I have 
made all these changes to my design. So we can see students start by reading something then watching a video and then discuss uh, some of the questions they've raised with, uh, uh, based on their prior reading and they can discuss this in the whole class. And then as the second part, they watch the next bit of video, then they collaborate on generating questions for the time with the lecturer. And then they meet in a webinar, for example, with the lecturer. And after this webinar, uh, they have some homework to do, which is to um, check with four peers uh, and discuss the items guided by the, um, what came out of the discussion with the lecturer. And finally, they need to produce something. And production is something that, for example, can be assessed. You will have noticed that we do not have a specific assessment uh, learning type. And this is because we view assessment just as another learning type, learning activity. And a learning activity where students produce something, an artifact that can be looked at, that can be judged, if you wish, that can, uh, that can uh, just be an activity that can be declared an assessment. So once we have that, and this is the last thing that I want to demonstrate in this part, I click on save. Uh, actually, I click on save and turn everything off to go into the view mode. And uh, this gives us the timeline overview of our TLAs. I can even switch into a more sequential view of what people need to do. And uh, you can see the notes, uh, which can be instructions for teachers to run this thing. Um, every bit has resources. In this case, these are suggestions of what technologies to use for this particular bit. So uh, when I then switch to the analysis uh, view, I can see the learning experience that my students are experiencing. So they will spend quite a lot of time discussing and only a very small part of the overall three hour learning experience will be spent on acquisition, on, on, on this passive elements of or rather um, sometimes they can be very passive elements of reading of consuming content so to speak so in this learning experience they are much more active they are inquiring they are discussing a lot a little bit of collaboration they are practicing and most importantly they're producing an output that the teacher can then afterwards look at and this particular experience is fully online and the teacher is only present for a quarter of all activities, which is what the learning design tells me. And this has resource implication when we are running this uh, thing. And um, we can also see that half of our designed session involves the whole class working together. 25% um, roughly is group work and the remaining time is individual work. And just to demonstrate, if we were past the COVID stage and uh, can go back to our classrooms, then we can effectively simply declare the discussion time with the teacher as a non-online activity, as a face-to-face -face activity. Um, and we still have a very rich active learning design where students are not just watching and consuming, but um, we now have this face-to-face -face component, which effectively revolves around discussion and making the best of the time with the teacher. And this is where I got this part of the demonstration. Um, did this raise any questions? Uh, I need to open my text chat. Yes, there are. Something now. Does the tool support Hebrew? That's a good question. Um, the text input, I think, depends on your system settings, but the hard-coded user interface elements currently does, um, uh, does not support Hebrew. That is something that we do have on our roadmap. We did have, uh, produce a Chinese version. I think there's also a Greek version. Mm -hmm. So we can Definitely. work with different scripts. We have the back end ready for that, but... Um, we, so far, we haven't had a partner, uh, effectively, to uh, translate the user interface into Hebrew. Yeah, but we could always um, invite someone to work with us on that, which would be great, actually.
So there's uh, definitely work for us to do. And, and we'd, we'd love to translate uh, the two into different languages and script systems. So I think at this point, I'm handing over to you, Diana. Okay. Um, so the bit that I'm going to go through now is um, looking at um, what, what, it, what it's like to go from uh, a face-to-face -to, -face to an online version. And you've seen a little of that in what, what Tim has demonstrated already. So if I uh, now find, it's so difficult to spot, I think that's it. There we are, okay. So this is um, <clears throat> back to the browser. And I'm looking at these things we've got in the section called moving online, because this has explicitly been about um, offering teachers different uh, ways in which you can run the same session in a variety of different ways. So you can see that um, our colleague Eileen Kennedy, who was uh, the person you heard on a couple of those videos, by the way, and uh, has worked with us both very closely over the years on this, and she's created this session called Understanding Learners in Context, and she's done it in four different ways. Now, that it, each one of those ways is in a specific subject context. And so I then took each of those specific subject context patterns and turned it into one which is generic by just replacing all the um, content words by the word topic or something similar. Um, now, the importance of this is that what we discover when we're working with these things is that most of what you see in a learning design is pedagogy. It's a description of the pedagogy and that's what's being captured. Um, so just as Tim showed in the generic design that he offered, offered there, um, there's uh, a great deal of what we're doing in this context, which is when you take away the content words, it's all pedagogy. So this one is, is similar in the way that it does, says, listen to the presentation about the topic. It explains why, how, and what, and then you fill in something appropriate. Does the topic make sense to you? Please note any questions you have. So that this is um, quite different from uh, what would have happened if you'd been looking at uh, this one, for example, understanding learners in context. And this is from a sociology course, which is about how you look at the theory about the so social ecological system. This theory was developed by to understand what happens when and so on. And you might look at that and think, well, you know, I teach chemistry, it's got nothing to do with me. Um, and that's not the right way to think about it. So one of the reasons that we thought in terms of patterns and generic and specific patterns is precisely because if you um, take away the content of a particular learning design, what you've got left is the pedagogy and that's all. Everything which is in here is now the pedagogical description of how that teacher has helped these students to um, understand whatever the topic is, and invite students to apply it to a context they are familiar with. So it might be something in economics, it might be something in, in science, where you're, you're trying to get students to think about quite an abstract context, um, topic, but in a, constant, a context that, which they can make sense of. So the, the point of this then is then to show that um, you could offer this kind of um, generic format, as, as Tim was showing, um, so that people can uh, then build on that pedagogy very straightforwardly just by putting those things in. Now, looking at the analysis of this, uh, we can see that we've got, um, I wonder if I can make this a little smaller. So it's a little easier to see, there we go. So we can see this analysis of quite a lot of learning through discussion, this kind of um, pale blue here, and learning through acquisition here. This is a wholly face-to-face -face, um, learning design, and the teacher is present for the great majority of it. It's, it's predominantly whole class, it's a, with a lot of group work and some individual work. 
So this is the kind of thing that many of our colleagues will typically do. They'll run an hour and a half session in this sort of way. Now, we've also got uh, the online version of that here, um, which again is an hour and a half. And this time, some of the, the um, instances of this process have been designed rather differently because these are all now online. So we've got the, this little sort of global symbol here. It doesn't have a cross through it. Uh, the, the teacher is there for some of it, not for this bit. This read, watch, listen bit is a, is a video. So <clears throat> the teacher doesn't need to be present for that. But in the discussion of the video, then yes, the teacher is present. Um, in this bit, uh, this is not online. This is the, the student producing something. Sorry, no, this is no teacher here. This is the student producing something, an example of a situation that's relevant to the topic, how you could make use of it, make notes to share with your group and so on. And so that's the student working alone. Then they're working in a small group of three, taking it in turns to share their ideas. And then they, the three of them work together to decide on your best example and what you're going to post to the class site. So having the opportunity to decide when you're in edit mode, for example, um, how am I going to set up this, um, this part of the, the process? So you begin by an introduction to the topic, you're then getting students to apply it, and then you're an then analyzing how it could guide future practice, for example. And each time you, you add a learning type, you have to choose which of those, sorry, and add an activity, you have to decide which of those different learning types this really is. This one is a collaboration. We've gone through the process of thinking about it yourself and producing something which you're then going to share and then you're debating it and then you're collaborating to decide what's the best we can get out of these three things. So it's inviting the teacher to think about what the students are doing at quite a micro level in order to achieve this, this overall aim and the various outcomes, which as I said, were um, defined in terms of um, um, Bloom's taxonomy. So if we now compare those two instances of the online experience there, and let me get to the analysis of that one and the face-to-face -face experience. So this was mostly acquisition and discussion, wholly face-to-face -face and teacher mostly present. When you go online, there's a lot of teacher not present, um, but for a fair chunk, about a third of it. Um, and is this the online one? And there's a lot more discussion, quite a large chunk of uh, acquisition and practice. And then the whole class session is really quite small here. You've got a lot more individual work and group work. So those things are, uh, and, and it's wholly online, of course. So these are some of the opportunities you now have to reflect on what you've got here and the extent to which this is, um, this is really um, enabling you to, to get the points across to, to students. So you, you, you find it's, it's a little easier to see what the benefits of being face-to-face -face are, how much time you can get together with the students in class and the benefits also of being able to go online and shape what the students are doing when you're not with them. Now, this doesn't mean that you would necessarily mean when you're going online, when you're having a, a kind of blended session or you're doing it wholly online, the teacher wouldn't be there for quite a lot of the time. It's really up to you how much time you're there interacting with students. And we're very aware right now that students don't want to be just left to their own devices um, without very much teacher interaction. But in reality, the amount of actual time with teachers that they get in the normal mode of teaching on campus isn't all that much. And in a typical master's course at the, at the Institute, for example, they get about three hours a week. Well, you might distribute that three hours differently. You would not have a whole three hour online session. So this is how you might um, experiment with what you do to guide your students during the, the, the times that you're not actually with them so that they have a, a much more constructed learning process. To, to work with when you're, when you're not there. So I'm going to pause there and see if there are any um, comments, questions, critiques. Uh, we've got one or two things. Yes. Coming. Uh, there is a bit of a discussion in the chat going on and uh, I have tried to answer uh, some of it. And the latest question is, is there a way to locate the generic examples in your uh, website? 
So when you're registered on the Learning Designer, you can go into the browser and Diana has been demonstrating the designs that are in the moving online um, category, which should be straightforward to find. So how can I design a, a lesson? Oops, I've lost the text chat. How, uh, the next question is, how can I design a lesson in different levels considering uh, to consider differences between students? Ah, so effectively the question is if you, if I understand correctly, the question is if you want to tailor part of your uh, yeah. session to different people in the class, how do you represent this in the learning designer? Yes. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. This is about differentiation. Yes. Yeah. Um, and because the learning designer is collecting the students whole time during a particular session, the only way you can do that is to have a separate design for each group of students. Because otherwise, if you're saying at, at this point, some of them were doing this, some of them were doing this, then, then it's, you, you mess up the, um, the timing or the analysis of the, the nature, because you could have some students working in a group of two and others working in a group of five, some working on their own. And you can't handle that within the way in which the uh, learning designer analyzes and represents what they're doing. So the, the best way to do that is, is to separate each one out. And that's a very important question because there is so much of that goes on, especially within schools, less so at university level, interestingly. Also in universities, also in the campus. You do do that? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. That's an important question. Any other comments or questions so far? We, we had a bit of a discussion uh, that there was a question about a limit on learning time. So if, if you were to decide a whole semester on uh, one screen, we wouldn't recommend do this in one design, rather break it up by, for example, week by week or so, uh, ideally session by session. And as I've written in the text chat, uh, we are going to release very soon a feature where you can combine multiple designs into um, something bigger. Yeah, this is more like a series of tabs. I mean, this is, this is working at the session level, as, as we were explaining earlier. It's quite a micro uh, plan. So um, you, you, you can then group them in different tabs and you can build up over the time. But um, you know, the, the representation on one screen doesn't leave you much more room, as Tim was saying. You know, if you're trying to get um, 10 sessions onto one screen, it would just be a mess. You don't see it the same way. Uh, different levels, examples of foreign language. Examples of foreign language learning. Well, we have some foreign language um, exemplars in here somewhere. This, this, by the way, no, I'm not sharing anymore, am I? Sorry. Um, for the, the question about where are these things, um, Am I showing the right one? Yes. This, this is in the teaching continuity um, section of the browser. Um, it's called teaching continuity because that's what we're trying to achieve at UCL, despite this um, huge disparity in um, teaching on campus and teaching online. We're trying to create a kind of sense of continuity. So there's a number of designs in there. I, um, uh, you, uh, you, I think you're sharing the wrong screen. Am I sharing the wrong screen? Oh, sorry. Interesting. Uh, while you're doing this, can I just mention there's a search function and I've just done a search on language and uh, received a number of um, designs uh, about uh, language teaching, including Chinese, Portuguese, foreign language learning, English language practice and so on. Yes, let's, let's show that because um, this, this, are you now seeing something headed teaching continuity? Uh, I've just done a generic search on, on the top level, really. Yes, well, that, that's what I was going to do, but I was just, am I, are you seeing my screen? Uh, yes. That's, that's yes. a teaching continuity. Okay, good. It's, for some reason, it's, it's remarkably hard to check this. Um, so I'm now going to get, go back to the main level of the browser. Um, and what we can do is view designs as a list, for example. And then you'll see all of them um, with, um, you know, with 
several pages worth of designs. And what we can do here is to check for what um, Tim just mentioned. Was it language, Tim? Yeah. You were searching for. So we'll see any designs which have got something to do with language. How to teach Chinese as a foreign language, foreign language learning, English language practice, languages in Europe, um, introduction to the Latin language. There's, there's quite a few there. Um, I wish I could find one. There are several on here in, in Spanish and Russian and things, but I'm not quite sure where they are. None in Hebrew yet. So. I, don't, I, don't, I mean, I think we've got one in Arabic, but um, I don't think we've got, um, I don't remember seeing Hebrew at all. Okay, so how are we doing on the questions? Um, there are two more comments. Most of those, have we? Um, uh, we're doing on time. Well, we, we've only got 12 minutes left now. So I think perhaps, um, Tim, if you'd like to move into the next yes. demonstration. Let me share my screen then. Uh, Can you override me? Let me stop sharing. Yeah, thank you, Diana. So I am in my personal space of designs uh, and I am just picking uh, one activity that's already been filled in. Uh, as you can see, it's an activity about using an IC tool, ICT tool in an educational context. And it's very collaborative and a lot of production. So it's a really hands-on activity where students are effectively um, creating a database, a collection of annotated tools, and they're developing a categorization system together um, in order to uh, create a resource like an encyclopedia of tools suitable for education. And uh, what are we doing with this design then? How do we run it? How do we implement it? And uh, for that, we have options to export this tool. Uh, what I've been using in the text chat in between is I have uh, clicked on the sharing option, which allows me to grab a link, uh, which I can then, um, if I find the chat function in this, uh, oh, the chat doesn't seem to be there when I'm sharing my screen. Anyway, uh, I, I can share the link into the text chat later on. But even uh, when you're not, not, not logged in and you get a link to a design, you can effectively export it. And let me export this to Microsoft Word because what that does, it takes a bit of time to open up and it opens up on the wrong screen, obviously. Um, so if we make this a little bit bigger so that we can read it, what this does is it gives me a lesson plan with everything that I filled in. So this is effectively that you can give to a teacher or give to a VLE designer or give to um, your manager for validation, for development into your learning management system, uh, for creating learning resources in case they need to, have prepared, uh, need to be prepared, but also for the teacher in class as uh, effectively the timeline of what to do when. So we have all the context information about uh, how much time the session should take, how many people there should be in, the description, the mode, uh, the aims, the outcomes according to Bloom's taxonomy, everything that we filled in. And then the TLA, are uh, the teaching and learning activities, are represented like this. Um, yeah, we have the different learning types, investigate, produce, uh, how long they take, whether they're individual activities, whether the tutor is, needs to be present or not, and the description that you can effectively directly hand out to students, assuming you filled this in in the learning designer. Under the notes, um, there are additional information and or the tips for the teacher on how, how to operationalize that. And as you can see, what we have here is effectively a lesson plan. And not just that, the anal analysis also carries through. So we have a breakdown in terms of minutes and percentage wise, how the students are interacting with this exercise. And this exercise is quite specific in that 
it doesn't have any acquisition time at all and also no practice time at all. So this is really a resource building collaborative activity where students must discuss and must, uh, must work together. I think the colors are mixed up actually. Collaboration should be yellow and investigation should be uh, violet. Um, yeah, uh, but ultimately students produce something and uh, it's a mixture between individual and whole class work which runs fully online. So this is what I get, of, uh, and the teacher is not present at all. So this is a task that is just given out to students. Uh, the teacher can then evaluate the practical output here, this half, what students have produced. And if individual contributions, for example, have been tracked by the learn, learning management system, then um, the teacher can also break down individual contributions and the level of engagement by students. Um, there in, back in the learning designer, if you have spotted, uh, if you've looked very closely, you have spotted different export options. LDJ is uh, the learning designer internal format. So you can take your design offline and later upload it to the learning designer again. Um, however, a colleague uh, of, of uh, you in Israel has developed a Moodle plugin that can ingest the LDJ tools and uh, effectively create a course that contains the activity descriptions as um, descriptions in Moodle. I'm not quite sure if it also creates discussion forums, but at least you get all the descriptions that you've put in here in Moodle into the different sections. So uh, this is the link that we are currently working on, on how to uh, integrate um, the learning science into virtual learning environments. And there is another option here, export to IMSCC, which is the IMS common cartridge format that most modern uh, virtual learning environments can uh, import. This link is not yet live because we ran into some issues there. But the idea is that uh, at some point um, we are uh, going to be able to export the learning design as ca common cartridge format, which you can then ideally import in Moodle, Blackboard, or Canvas, whatever else you're using. And it would take over the activity descriptions with all the contextual components and uh, create at least the basics like a discussion forum for the discussion activity. But we are not quite there yet. There are some technical issues to resolve around that. Um, the, the nice thing of the, the experimental feature in terms of the export that we have is that our export for Moodle will also create um, an overview of the learning type breakdown. So when you import the common cartridge in Moodle, you see a section with all the instructions, but also a colored bar graph of how the learning experience for this particular section will look like. So that's where we are. This was an earlier question about how are we compatible with uh, VLEs and um, learning management systems. So we are not quite there yet, but on the way. And uh, your colleague in, uh, uh, in Israel, uh, um, you need to ask Yishai about details, um, but there is a working plugin that can take LDJ outputs into Moodle. I'll stop sharing my screen there so that I can have the text chat back. <clears throat> Tim, I put into text chat a link to the, um, the, the shortened link to the learning design I'd been showing, um, saying that I, I generated that the way you, you demonstrated. So we do have an example of that. Okay, and uh, just for the sake of completeness, uh, I shall also share the link to the design that I've just mm -hmm. had on my screen. Um, Tim, those designs you've been generating, they're not all in a public space. 
are they? Uh, no. They were in your private. They're very good. <laughs> Could you please put them in a public space? so that we can all see them. Do you, you have admin rights, don't you? I do, I that, do. That's yeah. something we haven't talked about because what we can do, which um, most people can't, is to place designs into particular categories within the browser. Um, so we can do that. So once Tim has made his designs public, um, we, can, we can put those in different categories of the browser. Um, there was a, an interesting question about being able to um, to generate other kinds of learning types. What was the question? It was from Aria. Is it possible to add new learning activities to the tool? Now, I think, I assume what he was asking, he, she, I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know. Um, what they were asking was, um, you know, is it just, are we, do we have to stick to those six? And the answer is yes, that is the only thing which is actually imposed in the whole thing. I think everything else is, is up for grabs and you can do what you like with it. But that is, is the one solid thing. Also, of course, Bloom's taxonomy is, um, it's only those six categories, although there are many different verbs and so on within the categories. But that's, um, it's proved stable enough and valuable enough um, over the last 10 years that we've been embedding the six learning types in the learning designer, um, that there's been no real need to, to change it. Nobody's yet come up with a type of learning which can't be fitted into one of those six categories. And of course, sometimes, I mean, collaborate is the one that bothers me most because it, it is a combination actually of learning through discussion, through practice and collaboration, um, exchanging um, practices. All the others are distinct and different from each other, but there's no way around it. And so I was inclined for a long time to leave out collaborate and just stick with five and say, well, you can combine anything, you know. But um, learning through collaboration is too important. So it's one of the six. Um, can I uh, just quickly address, uh, there's uh, uh, the two questions. Is there a space for designers to communicate and provide feedbacks on design templates? Uh, we don't have a discussion feature built in or common feature. But uh, we sort of, uh, well, we have run review um, activities in the past, uh, to, um, but for that, for the discussion around that, we used um, external um, learning environment. But the, the, we, we, we can facilitate uh, reviews. Then, then there is a question, do you have data? Oh, you, can, you could just add um, another TLA. So that's the way in which we've we've done it, and and you can you can use that TLA to edit um, a series of um, of what are essentially learning types, but um, but it, for each one you can um, comment on different aspects of the of the design, and that's you know it's um, it's a workaround really. Yeah. And we now should reconvene in the main room. Just a very quick yes, answer. We should. Oh, oh there's so many interesting questions here now. <laughs> Uh, uh, Before term, you you covered the um, the transfer to the VLE, which was yeah. what be, which was the one of the which was the first question. So we, we have now covered that. So you, yes, but uh, Tommy asked uh, if we have data about uh, the use of the tool. Yes, uh, we have plenty of data. We um, are aware that some people are using it for different purposes. Even colleagues of us at UCL who run ABC workshops, um, they are uh, trying to uh, use it at a module level uh, to repurpose one design and not go into the detail and just use it as a general outline, which kind of works. Um, uh, and we do have a pretty high number of users worldwide. And can, can you see that summary stats page? Is that coming up for you? Yes, yes it does. What does it tell us? That's over the last uh, couple of months and that's unique visits per day. So it gets up to nearly 2000 up there and um, number of return visits. And what's interesting is that um, over the um, over long periods, if we go back to, um, I don't know, January or something, um, then it, you can see this sort of huge rise. This was when the Future Learn MOOC on how to teach online started, and it was using, it referred to the learning designer, but it didn't do very much with it. 
So it's very interesting. You get loads of people actually going in to take a look, but it doesn't do much with it. So, you know, the proportion who are actually coming back is much lower than it used to be. Actually, actually it was pretty low. I mean, for years, it's been running at something like 35, 36% return visits. And over these recent months of, um, of getting masses of people going in, it's, it's, it's dropped about 25% unique. Uh, return because it's but anyway it's quite fun to look at these and then um is you know sort of looking at other countries and so on I, I won't go through all the data now we've really got to get back so we mustn't take any more time so i'm sorry about that but yes we do have data and of course you can see what people do with it because you can look at the designs which are collected in the browser in one sense as a direct okay uh we, we are being prompted uh urged yes, to <laughs> That's thank okay you. thank you so much for your engagement and for joining okay, thank you thank you very mm -hmm. much thank you